dear students, welcome to the linear algebra 1 uh, OMT 112. Today we are going to see the knowledge area 5. And in this knowledge area 5, we are going to talk about uh, operation or matrices and row reduction. Okay. Uh, this knowledge area 1 has been divided into uh, five subtopics. We are going to see about addition and subtraction of matrices. We are going to see about scalar multiplication of matrices. We are going to see matrix multiplication. We are going to see raw occurring form and reduced raw occurring form. Okay, starting with the first subtopic. Addition and the subtraction of matrices. Okay, what's new on addition and subtraction of matrices? Let's start with addition. To add two or more matrices, uh, we need to have the matrices with the same dimension. For, that, for instance, here, uh, let A is an N times N matrices. And we need to add with B. So B also needs to be N times N matrices. If they are of different dimension, it is impossible to add or subtract the two matrices. Okay. The same rule uh, is used also for subtraction, as I've already explained. Okay. Uh, we have different algebraic properties on adding uh, matrices. So let's see these algebraic properties. Uh, additive algebraic characteristics of matrices. Let R, uh, n times n, this means the, n, the set of n times n matrices with their entries are real numbers. B is a set of n times n matrices with their entries are real number, exactly. Then the following additive algebraic properties are satisfied. For example, when you add two matrices in which are in this set, uh, we call this closure property. It means the obtaining matrix, matrix will be in the same set. Addition of matrices are uh, commutative. Uh, when, what do you mean by saying commutative? It means if you add and then you swap the two matrices, you get the same answer. Also, we have associative property. Means adding two the matrices, then you add the next, the, the third one. The same as starting with adding the two, let's say here we started with adding B and C. And then we add the A. This is equal to taking A plus B. After getting the answer, then we add C. Here we get the same answer. This is what you call associative property or associative property. We have both identity property. In the set of matrices, which are n by n matrices, uh, and they are and they are and they are entries are real numbers, we have a zero matrix which is an identity matrix for addition. So if you take every matrix from this set A plus the zero matrix, you get the same matrix. Also we have inverse property. For addition, the inverse of a matrix is its negative matrix. For example, for every matrix A, which is in this set A, we have there are all we say there are existing negative matrix A, which also is in this set of matrices of n times n matrices, which are entries are real numbers. Okay, let's see this one. If you take uh, a matrix, uh, you add it with its matrix, negative matrix, uh, uh, you get a zero matrix. Let's see examples of adding and subtracting of matrices. Okay, uh, 
Okay. So, so uh, here we have an example of matrices. Let's go to see an example how we can do it. Students, uh, these are the, the algebraic properties of matrix multiplication. Okay, starting with the first closure property. Uh, let's say we have a set of matrices which are n by n matrices and they are entry the real numbers. So if you take the multiplication of two matrices, matrix A times matrix B, the matrix of change will be in a set. That's why we call it closure property. The second property is called associativity property or matrix multiplication. Uh, this works for three matrices. Let's say we have matrices A, B, and C. And then, uh, to check if your base uh, the, the associativity properties of matrix multiplication, we take the multiplication of two matrices, let's say here, yeah, like taking B and C first, then you multiply it with A. This will be equal as taking A times B first, and then you multiply with B. Also have the so-called distribution properties of matrix multiplication. Here, uh, works also with addition. Here means if you take A plus B, then you multiply with C. The same as taking A times C first, and then you plus B times C. Okay, we have also the so-called identity property. The identity property of matrices is the, ma the, 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 the identity matrix for matrix multiplication in the matrix that if you multiply with every matrix in the set, you remain with that matrix. The identity matrix here, we call it matrix, and not with I. In the matrix that all entries are zero, except the main diagonal contains only one, uh, one entries. I mean, uh, contain only one. The whole, I mean, the whole uh, main diagonal, the entries of the main diagonal are just ones. Uh, okay. Let's go see an example before we continue. Okay, let's see this example. We are given three matrices, matrix A, matrix B, and matrix C. And we ask you to compute the following A, B, C, D, and E. So let's start with A. Uh, A is just adding two matrices, taking A plus B. Uh, we have matrix A, which has entries 2, 1, 0, 3, 0, 5, and 1, 1, 2. Again, we have matrix B. Uh, we are adding matrix B with entries 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, and 1, 2, 3. So, to add these two matrices, we add the corresponding entries of the matrices. So here, we'll get 2 plus 1, we'll get 3. 1 plus 2, we'll get 3. 0 plus 3, we'll get 3. Again, the second row, 3 plus 4, we get 7. 0 plus 1, we get 1. And 5 plus 5, we get 10. Again, the third row, 1 plus 1, you get 2, 1 plus 2, you get 3, and 2 plus 3, you get 5. So therefore, A plus B equal to the matrix with entry 3, 3, 3, 7, 1, 10, and 2, 3, 5. Just simple by adding. B are taking A minus C. 
We have matrix A, which has entries to 1, 0, 3, 0, 5, 1, 1, 2. And also, we are asked to take away uh, matrix C, which has entries 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3. So, here, we are going to subtract the corresponding entries of the two matrices. So we're taking 2 minus 1, it's 1, 1, take a 1, 0, 0 minus 1, it's negative 1. Again, 3 minus 1, it's 2. 0 minus 2, negative 2. 5 minus 3, it's 2. So 1 minus 2, it's negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So this is A minus a minus C. Okay, next. C. So, to find C, you are still to find 3 times A. This matrix is a multiplication of matrix. Here, 3 is a star, and A is a matrix of 3 by 3. So, we just put 3 times the matrix C. A, which are length to 1, 0, 3, 0, 5, 1, 1, 2. So we are applying 3 to respecting to the entries of this matrix C, A. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. So the matrix 3 uh, times A is this one. Very simple. So let's go to the next thing. Uh, we are going to find B times A. B times A. So here students, let me wrap here. Let's see B times A. Uh, B times A, starting with matrix A and B. Um, be careful, listen attentively, um, see how you can multiply matrices. Okay, matrix B has entries 1, 2, and 3. And also, we have the matrix C, uh, we have the row, which has 4, 1, and 5, again 1, 2, and 3. Times the other matrix, which is A, 2, 1, 0, 3, 0, 5, and 1, 1, 2. Okay, dear students. Let's continue. Let's continue. How can we multiply this one? We just take the row. Uh, the elements of the draw times the corresponding elements of the column of the second matrix. So it means here uh, multiply here is just to take 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 1. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 2 times 3 is 60 and 3 times 1 is 3. This is the first entry of this matrix. Again, we continue with the same row multiplying to the second column. So 1 times 1 will be 1 plus 2 times 0 will be 0 plus 3 times 1 will be 3. Again, we go uh, the same uh, column, I mean the same row of the first matrix and the second column. So 1 times 0 is 0 plus 2 times 5 is 10 plus 3 times 2 it is 60. Okay, now we are going again to find the second row of the resulting matrix. So again we get to take the row times each of the column of the second matrix. So 4 times 2 will be 8, uh, 1 times 3 is 3, and 5 times 1 
it's 5. Again, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 times 0 is 0, plus 1 times 5 it is 5. Again, 4 times 0 it gets 0, plus 1 times 5 is 5, plus 5 times 2 is 10. The last row of this matrix, we take the last row of the first uh, matrix times every column of the second matrix. So 1 times 2 will get 2, plus 2 times 3 gets 6, plus 3 times 1 is 3. Again, 1 times 1 is 1, plus 0, uh, uh, plus 3. Again, it will be 0, plus 10, plus uh, 6. Okay. So, therefore, this is the matrix BA, obtained by taking matrix A, B times A. So, of course, here, uh, 2 times this one will be plus 6, plus 3 will be 11, again here will be 4, again will be 16, summing up all of this, we get it 16 also, and this one will be 9, this one is 15. Uh, here we are going to get 11, and here is 4, and here is 16. So the matrix C, B, A. Let's go to C, the matrix C, uh, A, B, part E, A, B. This was part e, B. Okay, so here we're going to start with matrix A. Again, we multiply as we multiply in taking B times A. So we start with the matrix C A. So matrix A are the following entries: two one zero, three zero five, one one two times matrix B. As uh, one, two, three, four, one, five, and one, two, three. Okay, students, let's multiply. Okay, well, now you have one experience, you have to multiply the first one. So here I will go just so quickly, uh, uh, a bit quickly. Taking this one, you get two plus one times four is four and the other is 0. Then 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 times 1 is 1, plus 0, 0 times 2. Then 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 times 5 is 5, plus 0. Again, the second column, I mean the second row. 3 times 3 is 0, plus 0, plus uh, uh, 3 times 1 is 3, 0 times 4 is 0, 5 times 1 is 5. Again, to the other column, we get 6 plus 0 plus 10. Again, the other column, we get 9 plus 0 plus 5 times uh, 3 is 15. Again, here it's 1 times 1, it's 1 plus 4 plus 2. Again, it's 2 plus 1 plus 4. Again, it's 3 plus 5 plus 6. Okay, so here we're going to get matrix AB. The matrix AB equal to here is 6 after taking the summation, here is 5 after taking the summation, here is 9 after taking the summation, here is 8 after taking the summation. Here is 16 after taking the summation, and here is 24 after taking the summation. Now, this plus, summing up all of this, we get 7, and here we get also 7, and here we are going to get 14. So, this is the, the obtained matrix after taking matrix A times B. So, what have you observed in my dear students? So, you can see that taking matrix 
v times a is v parent from take matrix a times v. So what you can we conclude accordingly to the algebraic properties of matrix multiplication? Now we we'll say that the uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Dear students, let's go to the next part. Uh, this is the uh, row reduction. And this row reduction has been divided into two parts. We have row a column form and reduced row a column form. So in part four, we are going to see the row a column form. So what is row a column form? When we say a matrix satisfies row is, is in a row column form, uh, the matrix to be in a row column form should satisfy these three properties. Okay, the first property that the matrix has to satisfy is this. The first non-zero element in each row called the reading entry must be one. I repeat, the first non-zero element in each row should be one, and this one is called the reading entry. The second, each reading entry, each reading entry, uh, we are continuing with the basic row current form. As I'm saying that a matrix C is in the basic row current form, denoted as R E R R E F, when it satisfies the following conditions or the following properties or the following axioms. Okay. Remember, uh, we have seen raw a current form. In the matrix, to, or to, to be in the raw a current form, should satisfy the first three axioms. When it satisfies all of the three axioms, including the fourth axiom, this form is called the reduced raw a current form. Okay, let's go quickly to see these properties. The first property, as I've stated it in the row current form, the first non-zero element in each row is one, should be one, and this is called reading entry. Uh, the second property, in each reading entry of the row, in its column should be at the right hand side or the reading entry of the previous row. The third one is this. Rows, if the rows with zero or with all zero entries or with all zero elements, this row should appear at the bottom of the matrix. The fourth entry, I mean the fourth property or the fourth condition for matrix to be in reduced row current form. This makes a max to be in reduced row current form. You see, if it doesn't satisfy the fourth axiom, it means it is not in reduced row current form, but in the row current form. So what the fourth uh, condition states that the reading entry in each row is the only non-zero entry in its column. Let's see an example of the foreign uh, uh, the foreign matrices which are in a reduced in prior column form. If satisfies all the axioms. The axiom number one, the first reading entry, uh, the first non-zero element in each row should start with one. It's one here, this row has one, also non-zero number starts with one. Okay. The first one is satisfied. The second, in each reading entry in its row, uh, the reading entry of the row in its column appears at the right of the reading entry in the previous row. For example, this one, reading entry of the second row, uh, in its column appears at the right uh, of the first or previous uh, reading entry. 
or the other row, the previous row. Okay, third one, you will find there are there is a, a zero row or a row with all zero entries. So this row should appear at the bottom. So it is not here, no problem. This is not necessary to appear, but if it is there, it should appear at the bottom. Okay, the fourth, the first one. The remaining entry in each row. If the order name is zero in its column, for example, the reading entry here is one. It's only nine zero entry in its column. Also, when you come to the second row, the reading entry is this one, one. And it is only nine zero number in its column. Also, when you come to this one, the third row, the reading entry is one here. And it is only the nine zero entry in its column. Okay, uh, when you look at the other matrices, this has zero rows, uh, and this with zero rows and they appear at the bottom. So, this uh, in a reduced row column form. Okay, let's see an example how to compute or to reduce the matrix into row column form and introduce the row a column form. Okay, dear students, Let's see this example. Uh, reduce this matrix into a row equivalent form denoted as R and F and reduce the row equivalent form denoted as R R E F. So let's see the procedures. How we can do this one? Okay, remember the first thing it see that the first axiom is satisfied that the first non zero entry of the row should be one. That's called the reading entry. So, of course, starting with the first row of this matrix, it has already started with one. So no problem with the row number one. So we are going to reduce the second row, making sure that it also it has to start with the reading entry one. And also, this reading entry is in its, I mean, in its column, should be at the right of the previous reading entry of the previous row. So at two here, if this becomes the reading entry of this one, it is not at the right of the previous reading entry of the first row. So it means it's supposed to be this one or this one. So you have to reveal this one into zero. How can I do this this one into zero? To get row two, it means we are going to, to reform or to create another uh, another entries of the second row, reducing them uh, based on the first entry, I mean the first row, and this acting as a pivot. So this is one. To make this one easier, we should take two times the first row. Subtracting the first row uh, and then subtracting the second row from the first row. So taking two times the first row, it means we get two and like two and here will be zero. So if this is two, minus this one will be zero. So let's start with the first row, which of course you have said this has no problem. So here we get zero, two minus two we get zero. And here is negative 2 minus negative 1, which will be negative 2 minus negative 1 will be it's just like negative 2 plus 1, which also will be negative 1. And also, here is 0. 0 minus negative 1, you get 1 positive. 1 positive. 
Okay. We need to make this one. Okay. Uh, we can also work with this one. That to get to row three. You have to take two times row one minus row three. So here is two minus one, two here. I mean, sorry. Since all of these are one, the first entries of the first row and the third row are one. You're just taking row one minus row three. So here we get zero. Negative 1 minus 1, you get negative 2. And 0 minus 1, you get negative 1. So again, we are continuing with this one here. Okay, we need to get the first thing, the first, uh, the reading entry to be 1. So, it's R2 equal to negative 1 times R2. So here, we are going to get, uh, moving this one, uh, we are moving from here, next to this matrix. Here is 1, negative 1, 0. But if you multiply with negative 1, you will get 0, 1, and negative 1. And here, it is 0, negative 2, negative 1. So we are done with the second day. Row. So I'm going to the third row. Also, we need to get the reading entry, uh, which is one in the third row, but we're making sure that it is at the right of the reading entry in the first row. I mean the second row. So here is our pivot. And of course, if you want to make this one to be the reading entry, uh, to be one, will be not at the right of this one, the previous. So it means this has to be zero, and this will be one positive. So what should we do? Uh, moving from here, we have to take, to get to our three, with zero here, it's 2 row 2 plus row 3. So it means we are going to get this matrix. Sorry. We are going to get this matrix. This is your K. Negative 1, 0. And then it, this is your K. 1. And one. So here is zero. Taking two times this one, plus this one, we get zero. Two times this one, we will get it negative two. Negative two plus negative one, it's negative three. So we need to get this one to be one. The reading entry is negative one. So again, we have to take negative one over three times row 3. This will be the next row 3. So here, we are going to get 1, negative 1, and then 0. 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0 divided by 1, 1 over negative 3, we get 1 positive. So this one is in a row a current form. It is in row a current form. So therefore, we say uh, this matrix C is in a row a current form. Okay. So we are done with A. So to to get in this row current form, we proceed with the row current form based on the fourth condition. The fourth condition is said that each 
Daily entry uh, of each row, if appears in its column, it is only the natural number in its column. So coming here, one, I got one, zero. One, I mean zero. Uh, here is it. It's one, is it? Like one, zero, zero. I mean, here is one. Starting the first column, the rating entry in this column, it is one and it's one at line zero number. So here, the rating entry is this one. And it is not on the line zero number. So we have to make this one to be zero. This means we are going to use the first column, I mean the first row. How can we use the first row? We just take, to get the first row, just take uh, the first row plus the second row. Row 1 plus row 2. So it means uh, here we are going to get this matrix. Here will be 1, here will be 0. If I do this, this one will be 0, this plus this one will be 1. And again, here will be 0, 1, I get 1. And again, here will be 0, 0, 1. So it's the only non zero number in this one. Yeah, it's okay. The only non zero number in this one, this entry is okay. But here, this is the reading entry, but it's not only the non zero number in its column. So we have also to reduce these two to be able to spawn this one. So how can we do this one? We just take uh, row one should be row one plus row three. And the row two should be row two plus row three. If you add this, uh, you get one, zero, this plus this one you get zero. If you count this one, you get zero, one, get one plus one, it's one, it's zero. Again, this is your okay. k. Zero, zero, 1. So this is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is in a reduced row a current form, which is the part B. Here, students, looking at the operation on matrices and the row reduction. Now we can see, uh, I want just to, to, to give you some notes about the application of row reduction. Row reduction can be used in finding the index of a matrix and it can be used also in solving systems of linear equations. Thank you so much and this is the end of this lecture.